In this video, we're going to take a look at different ways that we can use the extrusion tools. All right, so let's go ahead and create the hole for the top of the drone. So in the reference image, you can see that there's this motor that sticks up off the top of the arm here. And what I want to do is I want to create a hole for that to fit in. So let's go to the polygon mode, and let's select these four polygons across the top. Now, you might be tempted whenever you're creating holes to just go ahead and go to extrude on the settings and then drop it down in a negative direction. While that does give you a hole, what it does is it puts polygons on top of one another. So we have these polygons on the outside and then we have the ones on the inside and they're exactly in the same position. And what that can do is it can create a flicker or what's considered Z fighting. It doesn't understand which polygon it should show first and so you get this weird flicker on screen. So to remedy that what we'll do is we'll use the inset tool first to create the polygon on the inside of that and what we'll do is we'll drop this down to a low value of something like maybe one. Let's go, let's try two. I think two would be better. So once we've done that you can see that we have this nice neat little rim across the top. Then what we can do is hit OK and then use the extrude tool again and take it into a negative direction to create that concave shape. So let's go ahead and take this to negative five or maybe six. Let's try five first. That should give us enough room. Now it's important to watch out whenever you're creating these concave shapes if you take the value too low you can go through the geometry. So just be mindful of that. Normally what I like to do is I like to give it a little bit of room there as much as needed. So let's do let's do negative six. I think that's going to be a better value for us. And then we'll hit OK on that. And now we have this negative value. Now the extrude tool is pretty simple. There are three different extrusion methods that we can do with that. Um, so if I were to select multiple polygons, um, let's do these on the outside. Let me hit Alt X so we can see this a little bit easier. If I were to select these polygons and I try to extrude them out, you have something in mind of what you want to do. You either want to extrude all of those polygons you have selected in a specific direction or in one direction, or you want them to extrude outward in their own directions, or perhaps you want to extrude them by polygon. Let's take a look at those settings. So under settings, you'll see that we have the extrusion method. And we're, remember, we've talked about it a little bit by group, by local normal, and by polygon. I want to show you the, um, the exact um, behavior that each one will give. So as you can see, we're using by group at this point. And with by group, what it does is it takes those polygons and it averages out the direction based on the normal direction of each polygon. Now a normal is basically, let's take a look at this face right here, it is the perpendicular direction of the face itself. So what it's doing is it's looking at all of those and it says, okay, for the most part it should be going out in this direction. So now I have it set to negative six, so let's set it to positive six. And you can see that it keeps them all together and keeps them in the same shape and extrudes them out in the uh, Z direction here. So let's switch this over to local normal. Now this gives us a little bit of a better result. What it does is it extrudes out each polygon in their own local normal direction while keeping them together at the seams. So this could be really great for creating something like a wheel. So you've created the, the rim itself and you want to create the wheel off of that. Uh, or uh, it could be used for a number of different things. I use local normal quite a bit whenever I'm modeling. Now the other one that we have is by polygon and this one gives you the same benefit except it splits the polygons between the seams and so you could use this for something like spikes on armor or something like that. So this could give you an, uh, an even better result uh, whenever you're trying to do uh, something very specific like the spikes on the armor or a mace or something like that. So in this case I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel because I don't really need that extra geometry for this. Now there's one more thing that I want to do and that's to take the polygons across the bottom and I want to extrude those down. 
So to extrude those down, um, we could use the extrude tool, but you'll look at this and you'll see a little bit of a taper right here. So a different tool that we could use could be bevel. So let me use the bevel settings and you'll see that it gives us the same extrusion methods. It gives us the group, local, normal, and by polygon. In this case, I'm just going to leave it as group because I want them to come down together and, and to keep that same shape. But then we have the extrusion height, okay, and I want to set this to maybe, uh, let's do two on this one. And then we have this taper amount, or outline amount, I should say. And you can adjust the taper on that. So in this case, we wanted to do negative one on that, and then we'll just simply hit OK. You can see here that bevel is very similar to extrude. It just allows us to do one quick step that we would normally do. Now, I could have done this with, let me hit Control-Z, with the extrude tool by just extruding it down one, like we or two, like we did, and then hit OK, and then grab the scale tool, and then scale that in. And for some reason, that kept them separate. Let me extrude that again. Let's do it by group. There we go. And then scale it in. Now, it's also not scaling correctly because I have constraints still turned on. Let's make sure those are off. So you can see extra steps with that. So either way will be fine. You'll get to the exact same result. Um, there are just times that some tools will work a little bit faster than others. Okay, so now that we have that, let's talk about extrusion along a spline. Now this is going to take some extra steps to do. Um, so what I want to do is I want to show you how to create the spline and then how to use that extrude along spline. And we'll talk about some of the caveats that come along with that. And we'll do that in our next video.